Okay, so now that we have the custom UI stuff tackled, we can get into the techniques of hard surface sculpting. And one of the most important things when you're doing hard surface stuff, especially um, stuff that has multiple subtools, is creating proper base meshes, or learning how to create those. And there's a few different ways to go about this, um, and I'll go ahead and go over them. So the first way we're going to do this is with extraction. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the poly edges just to see this better. And I'm going to leave the settings normal. So basically what we, could, what we can do, this, the way the standard extraction works is, we'll go ahead and turn on symmetry, and you just mask, and you paint a mask, and you mask the areas that you want to be extracted. So, And you can use any of the masking techniques we learned previously, or any of the masking tools, I should say. So we can go ahead and go into our mask curve. And we can skip that until the next restart. And so we can go ahead and kind of clean up this mesh a little bit, or this mask a little bit. All right, so now we have that. We can go ahead and click Extract at point 0.2. It's a very thin. As you can see here, I'll go ahead and click the colon key to show you exactly what's going on here. So basically what we have is we have a shell, essentially. We have an inside part of the polygons, an outside part, and an edge. I'll go ahead and make this thicker so I can illustrate this a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and turn the thickness up to 1. We can go ahead and extract. And you can see now a lot better what's going on here. And the great thing about this is that it comes with polygroups. So we have an inner an outer, and the edge. And we're going to be using this edge and the fact that it's a separate polygroup a lot to create um, some of the intricate details that we're going to be going into. For example, we can go ahead and hide the other areas. Come into here. So we can go down to our geometry tab. And you see edge loop here. And what edge loop does is it adds two edge loops into the bounding areas that you have. So we can go ahead and click edge loop. And you can see, so we have two new edge loops and it actually has um, separated them by polygroups. All right, so we have this area. Um, and now what we want to kind of do is create a little insert in a way to show that this area is not all one piece, but it perhaps is multiple pieces. So what we can do is go ahead and shrink our selection. I'll go ahead and go use the um, use the menus for this. I'll avoid using the shortcuts as much as possible. So we can go ahead and shrink our selection. And then we can go ahead and create edge loop again and again. And so we have a very fine edge loop you see right here. And we can go ahead and shrink again. And now we can go into um, deformations. And we can use inflate. I'll just insert a value, let's say negative 5. and unhide everything and you can see it gives us this nice little insert that could be a little bit deeper let's see here go into inflate and we'll click negative 10 for example all right so you can see now that we have a pretty nice way of getting this sort of in-between detail that would otherwise be hard to get and it's a uh, very neat very clean because it is a regular size None of this is oscillating, like going kind of in and out because of the extraction. The extraction always extracts at um, one width, so that's perfect for us. All right, another way to extract um, is by using previously made meshes and just hiding areas that you don't want. So the way we can go about doing this is say we want kind of like a little extra piece right here. We can go ahead and turn on polyframe. And now we can use our selection brush. We can go ahead and select lasso and uh, skip this warning until restart. And we can just go ahead and select this area right here. And the way um, selections work in this instance, if you don't have any area masked, but you only have certain areas showing, 
what it will do is it'll just use those areas to extract. So we can go ahead and come up here. I'm going to turn down the edge smoothness a little bit. Um, sometimes it's a trick to get our edge smoothness to a point where we still have sharp edges, for example, right here, maybe right here. But all of this um, jagged, um, unresolved geometry gets smoothed out. So it's it's kind of a struggle between those two, and it's kind of a balance, and you have to choose which. So um, I'll go through a bunch of different values during the sculpting process, and it's really um, instance-based parameter that you have to change, and you have to change it based on what looks best for that particular mesh. So we can go ahead and extract this. And okay, so see, we got a few problems already, namely this piece right here that's overflowing. Um, the reason it's creating the mesh like this is because the area of the original mesh, which we'll go back to right here, curves off a little bit. It curves down a little bit and it creates an unwanted angle for the mesh. So what we want to do is we can just go ahead and hide this part of the mesh like this. We can go ahead and delete our messed up one. Come back up here and re extract. So we come down here, and as you can see now we have a nice clean edge of the mesh. All right, and the alternative way to getting this mesh or this type of mesh is by using masking to create a new poly group, um, which is essentially the same as hiding, but um, in some instances, painting your mask will be a little bit better and you'll have a little bit more control. So I'll go ahead and go back to my masking pen. And we'll just go ahead and create this little kind of band. Sometimes it's good to stay away from the mesh's um, edges, especially of extracted meshes because of the issue you saw previously. It doesn't always do that, but sometimes it'll get that to happen. All right, so we have this. So now we can go into our polygroups. But we can go polygroups from masking, and I'll go ahead and turn on polyframe so you can see what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and click from masking, and you'll see it'll separate these two into a polygroup, into separate polygroups. And we can unmask it, and control shift click this and hide it. And now what we have is a area that we can use to extract. So we'll go ahead and extract this at 0.5, and we'll see the mesh it created for us. Okay, so it's a bit wobbly. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. Okay. And come back into here. And what we're going to do is we're going to head, go ahead and turn up the edge smoothness to about 5. We'll extract again and see how that does. Right, and you can see it's still a little bit wobbly. Um, and this is always going to be a struggle for us. Um, for creating meshes like this. So we can go ahead and delete this one again. Come into our mesh that we're using to create. And what we can go ahead and do is use the lasso selection to hide certain areas. So this particular polygon is, has been an issue, so we can go ahead and hide that area. And sometimes you can see it unhides certain areas, which helps a lot. I don't know why it does that, but um, it really does help. You can see these um, polygroups coming in, and they're part of a different polygroup, but it'll help nonetheless. So I'm going to go ahead and group visible. And we'll go ahead and um, just mask this and see if it works. Actually, we'll go ahead and hide these two areas right here to make it more straight. So we can group visible and change this to maybe four, and we'll extract that and see how that fares. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, what we can go ahead and do now is we can kind of see that this this side looks a little bit better than this side. Um, and since the, unfortunately, the mirror and weld is mirroring to the other side, you can see this side's changing instead of this side. So what we can do is we can go ahead and go into our subtool master, mirror, and we can go ahead and append as a new subtool. And we'll mirror it along the x-axis, because this is this axis. Alright, so now we have a new subtool that has been mirrored to the other side. 
And you can see this side is a little bit cleaner than the other side. This side over here now, since we switched it. So we can go ahead and click Mirror and Weld. And now we have a mesh that is identical on both sides. And it's still pretty clean. And we can still go in here and modify this area to create that look that we want. But say that you come up with a mesh like this and you think that the edges are not sharp enough. So what we can do in this case is we'll, I'll go ahead and delete all the um, edge loops I made in there. Unhide everything. And this is where group loops comes in. So what groups loops does is, like I said before, it'll add a series of loops along um, the edges of polygroups. So what we can do is go ahead and just use the standard settings and group loop this. And you can see it kind of makes, it softens everything a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and up the loops and lower the polish a bit. And now you can see that we have a little bit, something that's a little bit sharper. And then we can go ahead and go in and use the clipping brushes to uh, sharpen this up. So I'll go ahead and brush, open my brush palette, and then I'll press C for clipping, and then I'll click the clipping curve. And clipping curve works exactly the way that the select brushes work. So you hold Control Shift and you drag, and it'll cut everything along the graded edge. We can go ahead and turn on symmetry. Remember, click um, Alt twice to create a hard edge. And sometimes you gotta switch sides because of the way the gradient goes. All right, so now we have a pretty clean mesh. It's pretty solid. Um, it has the hard edges we kind of want. And yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, so another way we make um, clean meshes, this is the second way. Um, the first way, the mesh extraction um, is used probably 90% of the time to create uh, new meshes. But for some of the smaller details, um, it's nice to use Shadow Box, which is a new uh, feature in ZBrush, to create more intricate things. So what we can do is, the way Shadow Box works is it takes a subtool that's already created and converts it into the Shadow Box mode. Um, and since it uses subtools that are already created, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and duplicate um, a subtool that's near the area we want. And then we can go ahead and come down to Shadow Box right here, click it, and you can see it gives us this kind of box. And now what we do with this box is mask certain areas. I'll go ahead and turn off perspective and turn off, or sorry, turn on transparency so we can see where we're masking. So we're going to go ahead and just paint a mask on one of the axes or one of the planes. So we can go ahead and paint a mask kind of like this. And then you see nothing showing up quite yet. But now, when we paint on a second axis, axis, um, you can see a mesh that conforms to these two corresponding areas. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit further away. I wanted this to come out a bit more. So what we can do is we can just go ahead and exit shadow box and see that we have our mesh created and then re-enter shadow box. And what it'll do is it'll move this, it'll move this bounding box. So we can go ahead and turn on transparency again, draw a mask that kind of conforms to the front of it. Mask this. And let's see here, we can unmask this area right here. And I recommend only using the planes that you need, because when you start using all three planes, unless you really need to, it, it can start getting confusing um, about areas. So, okay, so we have this kind of like basic mesh, very simple, um, but it's it'll be great for our purposes. So what we can do is go ahead and exit shadow box, and you can see now we have a unified skin, has some... I have to admit, pretty wacky um, polygroups, but that's okay. We can go ahead and just unify them all. So we can go ahead and group visible. 
And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and relax this a bit, relax the um, the polygons a bit on themselves so we have easier sculpting time. And now we can go ahead and just use some of the trim brushes to create hard surface areas. So we can go ahead and come in here. All right, so this is how we're going to create a lot of the uh, smaller details that aren't going to be surface details. And so we have this kind of one area. I'm not going to take this too far because I want to cover these sculpting brushes a tad later. But say we want to create a few more of these. So what we can do is we can go ahead and duplicate this. So we'll duplicate that. Come down to the new one. And we can go ahead and re-enter Shadowbox and just mask outside to hide the, or to get rid of the mask entirely. And so we'll go ahead and enter transparency mode again and create another little doodad right here. And we'll say we'll create it right about here. Okay. So we can go ahead and exit transparency and exit shadow box. And you can see now we have another mesh with which to work. So we can move that around a little bit, kind of place it where we want it. Go ahead and relax the polygons. And start to work this out and refine it. Again, you could use the clipping brushes for this as well. Um, it just depends on what kind of surface detail you're trying to get into. If you're trying to get into softer mechanical surface detail, you want to use the polish brushes, and if you're getting into the hardest surface detail, you want to use the clipping brushes. Okay, so we have kind of a idea of how this is going about. And maybe create a little cut in here with the Damien Standard brush to make it look like it's integrated better. And this brush, the Damien Standard brush, actually is included with ZBrush. Um, it's just under Lightbox down here, so you have to go and do brushes to find it. Damien Standard right there. Okay, so those are the two main ways that we're going to be creating details. And there is one final way that we're going to um, make details, and that is the tubing. You'll notice with this character that there's quite a bit of tubing in it. And um, this is done almost exclusively with Z-Spheres, because they create the cleanest mesh um, to work with. So what we're going to do, go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and click Append to append a Z-Sphere. And we're going to add just a standard old Z-Sphere, and we'll go ahead and switch to it. And you can see it's kind of in here, in the center here. So we'll go ahead and move it out to a side, move it up a little bit, scale it down just a touch. And we'll go ahead and draw two spheres, one on either side, about the same size. And so we can drag these in and around and just create new, create new points as you need them. It's best to keep away from creating too many points, or create as little junctions as possible. It just makes the mesh easier to work with. So we'll go ahead and move these around into something similar to this. And now we can go ahead and go into the adaptive skin. We can preview it and you can see it gives us this kind of nice little tubing. So we can go ahead and make polymesh 3D, come back in here. Um, we can hide the z-sphere itself because this is still a z-sphere, it's not actually a mesh. As you see we can go back into the z-sphere, we can hide that. And it's good to keep it there just in case you want to use it later. And so now we want to append the poly mesh that we made. So we'll go ahead and come in here, append, select that subtool, um, divide it a few times, and kind of smooth it out a little bit. Um, there's actually a good smooth brush for this. If you go into your brush palette, and then smooth directional. So smooth, and then we can go to smooth directional right here. Go ahead and skip this notice. It always gives you a notice every time you switch between um, brushes that are not standard brushes. But okay, we can go ahead and hide that. And as you stroke along the edge this way, it'll smooth it in that direction. So it'll kind of make it more tube-like. You can see it kind of messes up the um, edge flow a little bit, but we can fix that with the relax. There we go. 
All right, so we kind of have a little bit of tubing. All right, so what do we do with this? You notice, first of all, this tubing is a bit thicker than I usually use, but um, for the purposes of a demo, it's completely fine. So the good thing about these Z spheres is that it comes with separate polygroups. You can see it kind of like segregates all the areas so that we have um, several different polygroups. And this is extremely useful for creating meshes like we did here. Um, separate kind of like meshes that kind of seem like it's accepting the tubing. So what we can do is we can go ahead and select this one right here. For example, we can go ahead and extrude at 0.3 perhaps. That's good. Turn off smoothing. When you when you use uh, smooth edges, it kind of gives you a little bit of a weird look. And since this edge is as smooth as you could ever want it, um, it's not needed anyways. So we can go ahead and come back in here. We've hidden everything we don't want. We extract and unhide it. And now you can see we have a very clean mesh for use of kind of mechanical tube accepting area. A bit of a bad sentence, but you get what I mean. Um, okay, so we have this, um, and now we can just add details to this. So one thing I would do is go ahead and use group loops to kind of add some polygons into here so we don't have such a hard time. So we can go ahead and turn loops up, turn polish down. There we go. And now use the clipping brushes to kind of create some detail. There we go. And we can do the same thing over over here too. So we can go ahead and grab this, extract it, and hide that. Turn that up, turn that down. And clip. All right, there we go. So that's essentially the entire way we're going to make new meshes. All right, so let's go ahead and get into an instance of where we may get a mesh that we've used a clipping brush on. And some of the clipping has messed up the mesh a little bit. So we can go ahead and just load a polysphere. And we'll cover clipping brushes next, but for right now, I want you to be aware that when you clip, everything that happens is the gradient is just pushed down towards the, or everything above the gradient area is pushed down towards the clip curve. So it's pushed along the normal to the clip curve. So if we clip up here, you'll see it, it's very clean. But if we clip down all the way down here, you'll see we get this kind of bounding circle around this, which is, for the most part, undesirable. So there is one way to fix this that's fairly quick, um, and it involves remeshing your mesh. So what we can go ahead and do is click Remesh All. It'll give us a nice little mesh. And now we can use Project All to just project the details, which would be basically the smoothness of this particular area of the sphere, onto this. So what we can do is go ahead and click Project All. And you can see it projects it fairly nicely. And go ahead and click Project All again. Relax the polygons a bit. And then we can, one way to fix this edge that we have right now is to just use the polish tool. We can go ahead and polish that a bit. And you can go ahead and play around with these polish and relax tools until you get something you like. Okay, so we have that. And to finally fix it up, we can just use a clip brush. Go and um, move it so it's not going to push anything like we did with the first sphere. So we can go ahead and you can see kind of this area right here. You can see how it has an angle right here. So we want to put it at the very middle to where everything is converging. So there we go. Clip that. And you can see we have something pretty decent, something that's workable. And um, that is how you take a messy mesh and make it clean.